I can tell you that there's so many investors that are now looking at and buying silver. There's going to be a shortage here. I'm pretty convinced of it. Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. As we round out the trading week on a Friday afternoon, and let's take a quick look at the silver price. Up 41 cents so far today, which is nice. Uh, nice way to end the week. Uh, back around 2370-ish. Obviously a little better than the past few days when silver took quite a beating. You see from there, 24 half down to 22 half. So down $2 at one point. But we will dig into some good news for silver investors. But before we do that, I'd like to mention that tonight's video is sponsored by Bluestone Resources, uh, who has the Cerro Blanca Gold Project. And a quick mid-fall progress update, uh, management team was working with their engineering firms to progress through design and optimization studies. Guatemala has reopened the borders to international travel and initial project ex execution team has begun to mobilize. Drilling has resumed and initial drill results were released, which we can take a quick look at over here. I will put the link to that in the description field below and you can see they do have some drill assays, which especially if you believe the price of gold is going to rise, well, there's a stock that will provide some leverage on that. And also is bringing you tonight's episode. So we thank Bluestone Resources for that. And with that said, what they are bringing you is a dig into the silver market. Again, you see the price here. And as you saw from the headline, interesting comments. I hope you guys are listening to these weekly Sprott calls with Craig Hemke. I mean, they've been, especially for the last couple of months, certainly that we're seeing things finally happen in the market. So what he's been reporting progressively as it goes along, gets a little more, you know, wilder isn't the word, but just more forceful. And I like paying attention to the specific words people use, how they phrase things. And let's take a little clip, uh, a little a couple seconds of what Eric said. This was last week's call on the 23rd, which means this week's call is out. Unfortunately, I'm staying with my friend here in Austin. who has a hot tub. So maybe we'll get some Sprott in the hot tub. But here is a snippet of what Eric said last week. The COMEX, as an example, yesterday traded 8.8 .8 billion of silver that day. Right. And that's not including the LBMA. It's not including Shanghai Gold Exchange. I mean, anywhere else it trades. I mean, we, we trade all the investment silver every day, which boggles my mind. That how, how, how is it that we can't get a shortage when I can tell you that there's so many investors that are now looking at and buying silver. There's going to be a shortage here. I'm pretty convinced of it. I mean, I think that says what it says. Obviously, if you've been watching this show for a while, you know what I feel. I try and always phrase that. This is what I, I do come on here and say what I genuinely believe. Uh, the money that I save for investment goes into silver or silver mining stocks, a couple of which we'll take a look at. There was some news out this week from some of them. Um, so, I mean, again, I, I don't know. I guess when I left the trading floor and being fortunate enough to learn Austrian economics and stop doing what Wall Street says and being able to make my own decisions, I like to present information that hopefully just adds clarity to what you're deciding. And again, bring on other people who share their views. And again, to hear Eric say, upgrade the language to he's convinced of a shortage. And certainly, I think that he's uh, in position to have access to data and, and insight that I don't. And certainly, everything else I can see makes sense supporting that. And he says he talked to a lot of investors who are seeing the same things. Obviously, you see the people I talk to, I bring them on the show. And a couple times this week talked about how even now the investment banks, Goldman, Bank of America, especially if Biden gets elected, there's a lot of commentary that silver will really shoot up. Will be interesting to see. I mean, if you remember now, I think fundamentally you would think of 
Biden is going to promise even faster stimulus, then theoretically the metals should shoot up. I would just caution to keep in mind, most of you probably remember 2016 when we heard for weeks and months, well, if Trump gets elected, uh, that'll be good for the price of gold and silver. And then election night, I believe it uh, rallied initially and then got pummeled in the middle of the night. So again, I'm not trying to sit here and, uh, you know, just like cry about manipulation, just to me anyways, the thing that determines the price is how many contracts are bought and sold, which does not, in fact, usually has no correlation to the actual fundamental developments. So um, you know, depending on what you're, you're rooting for, or what you think is going to happen, if gold and silver doesn't play out immediately on that night, you know, uh, let's take that with a grain of salt. But I bring, I'll continue bringing people on one after another. I don't, uh, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'm like, how many days do, uh, is it valuable to sit here and say that, you know, this is what the situation is, but to the degree when you hear these world class investors and i'm not just saying that because they're on my show but i mean i've sought out the that that was my goal to seek out the smartest people i could find see if there was something i've been missing um and i'm not claiming to have everything right but just so far most of the people have been confirming that rather than you know i have a few critics out there and i tried to answer them respectfully uh Either case, we're sharing Eric Sprott's opinion and what he says about other investors matches what you see there. It matches what I feel, what I genuinely believe and will continue to bet on. Also in that interview, Eric mentioned this story uh, about Andrew McGuire saying, China bypasses LVMA, buys unrefined gold from African and South American mines. That's in uh, episode 23. And even better, you can just go to GATA, right in their dispatches, click the link there. If you want to make a donation to help support GATA and all the great things they've done while you're there. In fact, I'm going to pull that up so I remember to do that when I am done here today. But Andrew, uh, his last appearance on the show, he mentioned that China was buying silver. So I'll be interested to dig into those comments, hear what he's seeing in gold. And normally, Andrew is the first Tuesday of the month, although I did hear from him today, but it's not going to be next week, but the following week. Although, fortunately, Jim Willie is coming up next week. So a great reason to hit that subscription button and the notification bell right there so that, see, the subscription button will make you a subscriber, which is great, and we love you too. But the notification bell, this way, each night when you see what, do uh, a video every night at 9, Eastern, Sunday at noon Eastern, and by hitting that notification bell, you'll be alerted so you can catch them live. Um, also, if you go to the ArcadiaEconomics.com homepage in the upper right corner, if you like getting things delivered to your uh, inbox, you can have you can sign up right there. I know some people like emails, some don't. So there's an option for everybody. Plus, you go to the homepage, you can hear Dave Kranzler's great call from yesterday. It was a fun one. Uh, and on just one separate note, I might add something. I was having a bit of a tough day yesterday. And I don't know, I mean, like anybody else, I have my things I struggle with at times. And although I've been noticing how this show has really become a special thing in my life where even, you know, on some days when things are going a little rough, uh, I love these people I get to talk to and to share it with all of you. So again, a thank you to Dave Kranzler, all the other guests and everybody out there watching, um, companies that are supporting what we're doing. And uh, just thank all of you for being a part of it. It's been a special thing in my life, especially with the way things have developed this year um following we did release the big silver short finally is in the stores now there it is on amazon also you can find an audio version appears on our banner up top there so again tried to lay out as best as i could figure out really taking this interview style format that people seem to enjoy there you can grab your copy when you click on that baby um but i'll stop pitching the book but just in the sense that 
I thought either I'm completely missing something or this is the situa situation of a lifetime, which is why I interviewed 15 of the world's top silver experts digging into that. So anyway, you can find, and it's also in the description field below if you'd like to find out more information on that. Here we have weekly transparent silver holdings. Interesting, you can see things have slowed down a bit over the last month and a half. Let's see, we got one, two, five, one. So let's say last two months, we can zoom in a little bit here. Some actually uh, slight amount coming out Although still, you can see it's been quite a year, 2020, because if we back out even further, I mean, you see what happened since price hit 12 bucks, really record setting territory. And, but anyway, just wanted to update you. It has slowed down a little bit. Uh, again, I'm not trying to just like give you reasons why to buy silver. I want to report things as accurately as possible. So I don't know, uh, still a lot of silver. If you look at what's over the last 10 years, you can see there was uh, back here in 2011 before the price went up about 700-ish, 725, let's call it, million ounces. Um, so basically has doubled since then while the price pretty much went down. It's finally gone up a bit this year. So certainly though the long-term trend, right? Maybe not. Yeah. So that wouldn't be the, the shorter term trend this year. A lot of metal has gone in there. Again, slowed down the last few weeks. So we will keep an eye on it and just present the data as is. Here, I'm gonna see if I can move my head out of the way there. We'll put Chris to the side. Uh, actually, I'm gonna hide myself for a second so you can see the chart. This is the silver chart up here. You see the price here is showing you the commercials this red line so short 59,000 contracts um so this is the one year now you can see here the banks usually when they get short and this was a pattern that had held for quite a while i'm going to back out to the three year this is worth taking a look at I wish I had studied this uh, or started trade rather or else have been studying it, started trading it earlier. Although maybe uh, it seems like we're going back to that pattern. Maybe I will reinvestigate that because generally, and certainly Ted Butler, I give full credit to because he's the one who tracks it. But when the banks would get really short, usually preceded the price coming down, the banks, well, they didn't seem to really get long, but flat usually was when it would rise. So here, this red line, basically the lower to the bottom that is, the more short they are. Here, pretty short, you saw a price decline. Then they cover, starts going back up. They get short, started coming down. But again, so we see here where it starts coming down, they were pretty short. Here, where it starts going up, they're close to flat. I mean, it's the, the chart's like an inverse. I mean, not surprisingly, because the these uh, banks, are doing gonna have quite an impact here they're flat price starts going up banks get short comes down a little bit banks get more short here's into March so boom that was down to 12 bucks then they're buying back contracts and then as it goes up here again deviating from the pattern I guess this really held for a couple of years it changed last summer and then uh, Let's see, it looks like here, when the price went up, you know, it stayed kind of flat and uh, we'll see how this one gets resolved. They're getting back a little bit more on the short side. I also think there's a degree to which, as this goes on, you know, and people continue to buy physical, that it gets a little harder to control the price like that. And anyway, we will see how it shakes out. It certainly is exciting times because at the end of the day, you know, it's like everything the Fed's already done and they're still planning new stimulus. So we'll see. We've also had record uh, COMEX deliveries. Here is gold. There is that Whopper 31,000. Record setting 55,000, 49,000. October was 34. 4,000, almost 35. 
and now we're into November. I've talked about platinum and palladium where we've seen some big numbers in recent weeks and months. And so we'll skip that today. But if you go here, you can see silver where it had that really big one in July. September did not play out as big as some people were expecting or maybe hoping for. But in either case, we got December, the delivery month. So at the end of November, we'll start finding out how that one shakes out. And of course, we'll be covering that here on Arcade Economics channel. Found at ArcadiaEconomics.com. Few last stories before we wrap up and send you off to have a great, wonderful weekend. Here, China's digital yuan aims to halt US dollarization, boost retail payments, ex-central bank governor says, and uh, you can search that title if you'd like to find out more, although there was a quote that I believe I highlighted. There he says, China believes digital currencies must respect exchange regimes, current sovereignty, but he added a major factor in the digital currency plan was to avoid dollarization. So, I mean, you can read through this and see here, we're hearing Fed coin a lot more, IMF reset, new Bretton Woods. Uh, I was talking with a friend here last night who is feeling more and more certain of a reset. I've also noticed if you listen to the last uh, couple Andrew McGuire interviews, it's something maybe next week we'll or in a week and a half, dig in more depth. He keeps talking about a reset, the reset, the reset. I'm um, curious if that, I mean, it's like the clues are there. I wonder, I'm not sure yet how to read if he's seen something specific indicating a reset. I know a lot of people think that is in the cards and I guess where I'm at is that certainly if there were going to be a reset, gee, you'd think a lot of the things we've seen this year would facilitate the environment in which to roll that out. Um, but again, I just try to do the best I can. I don't try to do the best I can. I do the best to phrase things. I, I, I think it's possible uh, the Rothschilds have not called me to give me specific details on that. But again, we'll see what Jim Willie says on Monday. That will be a fun one. So anyway, a couple of notices from some of the mining companies that uh, we cover here on the show. Uh, that I'd just like to pass along. Here's Silver Elephant, uh, actually upsized a previously announced bought deal to $8 million Canadian. Uh, Mackie Research as lead underwriter on behalf of a syndicate, Canaccord, Sprott involved to increase the size of the previously announced deal. Now up to $8 million. So again, uh, and some good news about uh, Silver Elephant. John Lee has kindly invited me to Bolivia. I believe David Morgan is going as well. So I would say I'm 95% chance that I will be down there, at least if traveling restrictions or rules play nicely. But um, talking with John and hopefully be getting some footage from Bolivia. And that way you can see more even on the ground. It'll be fun to record the show from there, especially if David's coming along and I love talking silver with John Lee as well. So that's always a lot of fun and I will keep you posted on that, especially because there is a chance that it may be a joint trip and I may be swinging by Argentina to go check out Silver Sands who commenced drilling at their Virginia silver project in Argentina. So uh, you met Keith Anderson was on the show uh, a couple months ago, and then he was also at Silverfest. Um, I'm a big fan of Keith and what they're doing, and he's invited me down there as well. So it's going to be an exciting couple of months, and you can see they've commenced the phase one drilling campaign, and again, you can find out more about what they are up to at silversandcore.com. C-O-R-P, Corp. You say core or Corp. I'll look that up one of these days uh, and uh, get my English perfectly correct for our, uh, for our show here. Funny words that maybe that's what I missed learning in grade school. But then here you have uh, Dolly Varden Silver. 
announces five million flow through private placement financing. Um, quote from Sean Kunkin that you have seen on the show before. We have been encouraged with recent drilling success, particularly with step out high grade silver intercepts, targeting extension of the Tobrit deposit. Once again, we're grateful to institutional shareholders who have continued to enable us to advance our high grade silver project, said Sean, who has taken over. There is new management at Dolly Varden. I know a lot of people have been familiar with Dolly for a while. And Sean took over. I've been quite impressed with Sean. Again, I want to be clear, all these do your own homework, do your due diligence. That's why I bring these guys on the show. Um, I'm learning as quickly as possible. Again, everybody has their own situation. So, um, but at least in terms of the silver stocks, gold stocks, trying to provide information and I'll share my opinion and what I honestly feel and really my investment strategy. I'm trying to find people. I like the way they do things that it matches with what I'm seeing, especially if they're targeting silver and I feel comfortable making bets on them. And I've been quite impressed with Sean. Um, and again, he was talking about how to find some good silver stocks. And again, uh, they are now a new sponsor to the show, which I'm quite excited about. So you'll be hearing plenty from him. Uh, and it's nice because I like how he's teaching us as well about the mining business, not just sitting there talking about only his stock, but that's something that I also felt was important that even with the sponsors that, yes, I want you guys to be able to get information about the projects, but also information and fun conversations about the markets and hearing what these guys think, why they got into silver. So anyway, uh, we'll be checking in with Sean soon enough. A last story here, just before we wrap up, Facebook preparing measures for possible election unrest. I don't know, I guess not silver related, but it just uh, teams a plan for the possibility of trying to calm election related conflict in the US by deploying internal tools. I guess someone did mention to me in my travels of these last, I don't remember which city I'm in half the time now, but in the last couple of days where, you know, hearing stories of, is there gonna be unrest or violence following the election? I don't know why that would be the case as a student of NLP and certainly as someone studies the way a lot of these media companies, conglomerates, banks, governments get often interconnected, concerns me a little bit. I mean, there was a Wall Street Journal alert yesterday that two people got stabbed somewhere and they were calling it a terrorist attack, which, I mean, certainly if that's what happened, but of course it's just disheartening to hear anytime someone is in that much pain that they would do anything like that. But I was thinking, why is the Wall Street Journal a finance institution sending that out? And again, I don't know, maybe they just felt it was important, but sometimes I think about that 10 o'clock news where it's like, you know, there's 7 billion people on the planet and each night some of them are going to die and some probably in unfortunate or unpleasant ways yet just my belief. You don't have to agree. I just sharing my belief. I think a lot of this media is presented just to get people feeling like crap all the time, which sometimes works. And I know there's a lot of people that are not having the easiest time or feeling great out there. Um, and certainly I'm sending some warm energy to anyone who's not having the easiest time right now. But that's why I will continue to make sure that we have a positive, fun vibe as much as possible through these times. I know people are worried about the election, what's going to happen, taxes, this, that, all the different things that go on. Although one of the things I love about Greg Manorino is how he, he says, well, at the end of the day, you know, we can treat each other well. Or like put a $5 bill in your neighbor's mailbox someday or something where... Um, you know, and I'm not telling anyone else what to do. This is what I try and do. And certainly, you know, some days when silver gets pounded, it is what it is and we make the best of it. Fortunately, um, I think, I like to think we're sharing some information that's gonna come in pretty darn useful before it's all said and done. And anyway, we're gonna wrap up for today, but thank you again for being here. And I'll mention one last time, this video was sponsored by Bluestone Resources. 
And to find out more about Jack Lundeen, who's running the project and what they're doing, well, just click on the video that is coming your way now.